Hello everyone, this is Chapter 2, Gene Technology. Here is the steps of gene cloning using bacterial plasmid as vector. Stage 1 is the isolation of the target gene. First, we need to extract plasmid from bacterial cells and the gene of interest from different sources such as prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. Next, we cut the DNA molecules using the same restriction enzymes. This is to produce fragments with the same complementary sticky ends. As shown in the diagram, the same restriction enzyme called the ECOR1 is used to cut the plasmid and also the foreign DNA into several fragments. Next stage is the insertion of the target gene into the cloning vector. Cloning vector such as bacterial plasmid has marker genes such as ampicillin resistant genes. The plasmids are mixed with the fragment of target genes to form recombinant DNA. As both plasmid and DNA fragments have the same complementary sticky ends, this allows them to stick together by complementary base pairing. The ligation between plasmid and the DNA fragment is catalyzed by DNA ligase. Stage 3 is the introduction of the recombinant DNA into a host cell. This is known as the transformation. The recombinant DNA is transferred into host cells such as E. coli in a medium containing calcium chloride. Calcium chloride facilitates the binding of the plasmid DNA to the surface of the host cell. The host cells will reproduce and some of them will take up the recombinant DNA. In order to let the host cells to take up the plasmid, the chilled host cells, usually at 4 degrees Celsius, are heated up to 42 degrees Celsius for 45 seconds and then placed back in ice. This is called the heat shock. Heat shock makes the membrane of the host cell to become more permeable to the plasmid. The last stage of gene cloning is the amplification of the target gene by host cell and selection. The host cells are cultured in a medium containing ampicillin, which is an antibiotic. These are examples of several bacterial cells. The host cells that do not take up the plasmid will die. As the plasmid contain ampicillin resistant gene that would allow the host cell to survive the ampicillin solution. Meanwhile, host cells that take up the plasmid will survive. Host cells with recombinant DNA reproduce through repeated cell division. This form a clone of cells. Because the dividing host cells replicate the recombinant plasmid and pass it on to their descendants, the foreign DNA and any genes it carries are cloned at the same time. Example of gene cloning is the production of human insulin. Most diabetic patients, especially type 1 diabetic patients, require ready supply of insulin. Earlier, insulin was produced from animal sources that can trigger allergic reaction. But with the discovery of gene technology, large amount of human insulin can be produced easily. First, human DNA is isolated from human cell. Both human DNA and plasmid are cut using the same restriction enzyme. The insulin gene now can be isolated from the human DNA and is being inserted into the plasmid. DNA ligase will seal the human gene and plasmid together to form recombinant DNA. Host cells such as E. coli would take up the recombined plasmid. E. coli can reproduce asexually by cell division, producing clones of cells with many copies of insulin gene. The bacteria are then induced to express the insulin gene 
into insulin hormone. These bacteria are like mini factories that are able to produce large amount of insulin in short time. The insulins are then collected and purified before distributed to diabetic patients. Subtopic 2.1.2 Gene or DNA Library Gene or DNA Library is a collection of cloned DNA. The purpose is to provide collection and storage of genetic information of organisms. It is also useful in DNA sequencing and also in gene cloning. There are two categories of DNA library. First is the genomic library and the second one is the complementary DNA or cDNA library. Genomic library consists of DNA fragments representing the entire genome of an organism. These include both exons and introns. For cDNA library, it contains only coding regions of the DNA fragment, aka the exons, that are synthesized from mRNA. Synthesizing cDNA is going to be discussed in the next subtopic.